Good morning and a very, very warm welcome to our online service. A very warm welcome to all four congregations who are joining us, to Steubens Valley United, to Emmanuel, to Grace Presbyterian, and to Pretoria North. It is a, it is a joy to be with you once again in your homes. And we pray that your, the service this morning will, will bless you and will truly speak to your hearts. A reminder that this morning is a communion service, so if you'd like to pause the video and go and get yourself your, um, your grape juice and your bread so that you can be ready for, for communion this morning. This morning we're going to be talking about rest, because for so many of us this has been a very difficult time, it's been a very challenging time, and for so many of us we are soul tired. And Theo will be speaking about that a bit later. But for our call to worship this morning, we read from Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us pray. Father God, as we come into your presence this morning, as we come to this time of worship, we pray that it will truly be a time of refreshing and a time where you will speak to our hearts, where we will find rest for our souls. We pray that you will be glorified in all that happens here this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
Thanks, Lord God, our Father, for the many things that you have given us, for your mer mercy that reaches out, for your patience that waits our returning, for your love that is ever ready to welcome sinners. We praise you that in Jesus Christ you come to us with forgiveness and that by your Holy Spirit, you can move us to repent and to receive your love. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thoughts, word and deed, by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct us with what we can be so that we can delight in your will. We can walk in your ways and we can share the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I seek You are my all in all Seeking you as a precious jewel Lord, to give up I'd be a fool You are my all in all my shame rising again I bless your name you are my all in all when I fall down you pick me up when I am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all Jesus Lamb of boys and girls it's lovely to be with you all I have two things I want to show you, show you this morning so the first one is this you may have seen one of these before this is a Bluetooth speaker it belongs to Tim my husband and uh, we use it mainly to play uh, sound off his computer because his computer speakers aren't working but you can use it to play music off your phones and all that kind of thing so you've you've probably all seen one of these before and the other one is one of these this is one of our lights that we use when Eskom switches off our power. So this is one of these rechargeable lights. 
and uh, whenever the power goes off we use this to eat supper and see each other and things like that now there's something that both of these things have in common and that that is they have to be recharged that they run out of power if you use them too much and it's interesting when they start to run out of power because the speaker firstly it starts beeping at you it goes beep 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 and then it starts to sound really funny if you leave it in and it starts to talk as though the people have gotten very slow and tired and the light does something similar as the power starts to run out so the light starts to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until eventually it switches off altogether now we're a little bit like the speaker and a like like this light because we get tired sometimes and we run out of power and i think in these times that we've been going through with the coronavirus and with some of you may have heard of the violence that was happening and school shutting and then opening and then shutting and even watching our parents and our loved ones some people getting sick and watching people get worried and concerned this can be very tiring and we we talk about being soul tired where where somehow we we just seem to be very tired on the inside very concerned very worried and when that's happened happens our, our power starts running low and and we see it in different ways we we don't have a light that starts to dim or we don't start to talk funny but but we can get really grumpy and we can get mean or we can get really scared sometimes we don't sleep very well sometimes we can get worried about a lot of things and these are all signs of us being soul tired of, of having all this stuff kind of affect us but you know what's really awesome and and uncle theo is going to be talking about this a bit later is that we can recharge just just like this light when it starts to run out you plug it in to the wall and and it gets recharged for the speaker as well it has a cable that you can plug into it and you can plug into the computer and it can get recharged and it can work well again and we can do that as well and there are all sorts of ways to to recharge our souls our call to worship this morning started with jesus saying come to me all you who are weary and burdened and, and that's jesus saying when you get soul tired when you get like this where you get worried and scared and frightened and and you find that you're being more grumpy jesus says come come talk to me and the ways that we recharge is by by talking with him by attending church and, and learning more about him but also by spending time with our our families doing fun things laughing together having a good conversation with a friend even if it's on zoom or over the phone spending time with grandparents and cousins it can also mean doing fun creative stuff like painting pictures or listening to good music or dancing like crazy around your house those are the sort of things that fill your soul and so i want to invite you this morning if you're feeling a bit soul tired to go to your mom and dad and say mom dad i'm feeling a bit soul tired can we do some things to fill our souls and maybe that will mean praying together a little more as a family maybe that may mean going out somewhere beautiful into nature having a picnic even in your own garden maybe that might mean reading a really good book together but whatever it is know that jesus is watching you that he cares for you and that he will help you to recharge that he will help you when you're soul tired and he will give you energy again so this morning i want to invite you to plug in to plug into jesus and to allow him to fill up your energy tanks let's pray lord jesus these times have been difficult for all of us and we just pray that you help us that you give us strength when we are scared and when we are tired that you give us great ideas for how to have fun and laugh that you remind us that we have moms and dads and families who love us and who will listen to us and who will care for us 
But Jesus, we pray especially that this morning, for every boy and girl, you will give them just a little bit more energy, that you will help them to plug into you, that their souls can be empowered once again. Thank you that you love us and that we don't do this alone. Amen. As we come to our scripture readings this morning, I'm kind of looking back at the message from last week. And last week, you'll remember that I quoted from Matthew chapter 11. And it was our call to worship this morning. Jackie read it for us. And I've been thinking for this week about this word rest. And in the Matthew passage, the word that is used for rest both times is the word anapao. And as I looked at this word in the places that it gets used, Elsewhere in the New Testament, I was fascinated by the variety of, of ways in which this word is used. Uh, here in Matthew 11, it's all about rest for your souls. And I guess we could talk about some kind of internal peace. But Jesus also uses this word in Gethsemane when he says to his disciples, enough sleeping and resting. And the word is anapower. And again, the sense that, that you sleep and that gives you rest, that it recharges, rejuvenates. It's also used in Mark 6 as a way of uh, getting away from stress and strain. The disciples have been on their missionary journey. They've come back exhausted. They are massed by the crowds. And so the word rest there really implies retreat. In the parable of the foolish farmer who builds the bigger and bigger barns, he at one point says, I'm going to build my barn so big that I'll be able to to just sit back and do nothing. And the word there is rest, to rest from his labor. So that implies a sense of retirement. Uh, then the word appears in Paul's letters to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and twice in Philemon. And here the word really implies refreshment. And Paul is talking about visits that he's had from some prominent Christians in the Corinthian community about Titus, who is refreshed by his visit to the Corinthians, and how Philemon's example and Philemon's cooperation with him in the gospel refreshes Paul's soul. And so this is the kind of refreshment that comes from being with fellow believers. And then a beautiful passage in 1 Peter, where Peter implies that, that when we are persecuted, when we are mocked, the Holy Spirit will be the one who refreshes us. And then when Jesus talks about the demon-possessed person who the evil spirit is cast out of, and he talks about how that evil spirit will go around about trying to find a place and then will return if it doesn't find a place. And it speaks about rest. And I guess we could imply from that the opposite of rest, and that is restlessness when we find no place where we belong or where we fit, or where we are welcomed. There's a sense that the word rest is used in the book of Revelation as a pause, as, and it talks about how the angels praise God without rest. 
that they praise God without pause, that they praise Him continually. And finally, the word is used to talk about our eternal rest in heaven. Now, that's such a broad range of meanings, but some of those meanings are particularly important to us in our discussion today. And so there are four scripture readings that I'm going to share with us this morning. And these readings really unpack some of the nuances of rest and how we obtain rest in our lives. So let's listen to God's word. Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Then from Mark 6, verses 30 to 32. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Then from 2 Corinthians 7 verse 14. In addition to our own encouragement, we were especially delighted to see how happy Titus was because his spirit has been refreshed by all of you. And then finally from 1 Peter 4 verse 14. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, and we pray that you would open our hearts and minds as we spend this time with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I said it last week, and I'll say it again this week. Many of us are in need of rest. Many of us are soul tired. And I encountered a number of folk from two weeks ago and even this week still encountering folk who tell me that they are soul tired. And last week we looked at the prophet Elijah who was running on empty. And you'll remember that I concluded with five important lessons that we need to learn. The first is that God says rest and eat because these basics will already help us to do better. Secondly, the rituals of journey and exercise can be very, very helpful. Thirdly, God understands our struggle and our pain and wants us to talk to Him. Fourthly, God's voice is not in the brokenness, not in the earthquake, wind and fire, but in the stillness. And we need to seek that stillness. And then finally, God is God has not left us alone. He wants to integrate us into a team. He wants to renew us in our mission. And this week I want to spend a second week on this idea of rest, of filling our tanks once again, because I'm so aware of how many people are just deeply exhausted, deeply tired in these challenging times. And I think there are a couple of reasons why people are tired. On a very practical level, it's been cold and dark. The winter months are always tough months. And I always find that towards the end of winter, people find themselves depleted and de-energized and, and worn out just by, by, by the struggle of winter. Add to that the uncertainty of our times with COVID, with the unrest, with our economy, our political situation. Add to that the sadness of our times, the loss of life. And I'm just so aware of how many people in the last month or so have lost somebody really close to them. That maybe in wave one and two, the idea of lost lives from COVID was three or four people removed. It's now people that we know 
you are lost. And then the sadness of the violence and the looting and the businesses that have had to close and the people whose futures are really in jeopardy. It's a really sad time. And then we struggle with the distortions that are going on, that there are mountains being made out of mole heaps on the one hand, and on the other hand, people are swallowing camels while they're straining out gnats. And when we think that our leaders should be focused on the critical issues of the day, there they are, majoring on the miners or straining out the gnats. And we want to say, really, is that what you, we're going to talk about? Is that what we're going to think about? And I've really struggled with that the last little while. Just so sad to see people bickering about the things that aren't crucial and missing out on the things that really matter. And finally, I think we're exhausted by the restrictions. And we had an interesting discussion. Brenda and I were just chatting about how many people seem to believe that for as long as what we have COVID and uh, level one or four or three or two, that we're just not going to be able to be as happy as we were before COVID. That somehow we've begun to believe that not only is a movement restricted because of safety, but somehow our ability to be happy has been restricted. And I think that's a false truth, but many of us are struggling with this, believing that somehow we can't be happy until we can go back. And that's not going to happen. We need to learn how to be happy in the moment and despite our circumstances. And the passages that we read earlier speak to the need that we have to find rest. The Matthew passage talks about the fact that it's only in our relationship with Jesus and the person that he is, that his yoke is easy, that his burden is light, that he's the good shepherd. It's only in a relationship with him that we will find peace. The Mark passage would remind us that there is a time to try to retreat, to try to get away from the craziness and the madness. The Corinthian passage would remind us that good Christian fellowship can really fill our tanks and renew our souls. On Tuesday night, I had conducted a, a, a funeral in the morning. I had another two funerals lined up. I, there were many pressures that I was under and we had a Bible study lined up. And to be absolutely honest, I just wasn't sure where I was going to get the energy. But then the Bible study started and there was gentle teasing and poking of fun at one another. One person cracked a joke. Another one saw something even funnier in that. And then we began to share how God had answered our prayers. We shared some scripture readings together, some insights together. And by the end of the hour, I wasn't tired. I was energized. I had felt that I had connected with brothers and sisters in Christ. And bear in mind, this was an online meeting, a Zoom meeting. And yet we were renewed and we were encouraged and we were strengthened. The passage from Peter reminds us that even when, when we experience opposition, even when we are persecuted and mocked, the Holy Spirit himself will give us rest. And what's sad is that the English translation, when we say the Spirit will rest upon us, that kind of sounds like he just comes in and sits on us, maybe a bit like a chicken sits on eggs. But the word means much more than that. The word means that the Spirit will give us rest, that the Spirit will comfort us, the Spirit will secure us, God's Spirit will hold us. And so these are beautiful comforts that we can hold on to in challenging times because we need to rest. Psychologists tell us that we need seven kinds of rest. We need physical rest, mental rest, sensory rest, that we, our, our inputs can be overloaded, that we need to get away from the constant flow of information and noise. We need creative rest. In other words, we need to do different things that if we work with numbers all the time, maybe we need to paint or to read fiction or listen to music. We also need emotional rest. We need time where we can let go of the, the harsh emotions that we're feeling to release them and, and unload. 
We also need social rest, that when people drain us and exhaust us, we need to get some space from them. We need to get away from toxic people and be with people who are good for us, or maybe even just be alone. And finally, we need spiritual rest. And to some extent, the four passages that we've talked about have aspects of all those seven kinds of rest that we need. But I want to finish off with a thought that emerges from the Mark 6 passage. Because Mark 6 describes how Jesus has had a really busy time of ministry. He's been to his hometown, but he was rejected there. And then he sends his disciples off two by two. But they come back so full of news and stories and, and they really need time to, to unload and, and decompress. But the crowds are all around them, so much so that they don't even have time to eat. And so Jesus says, let's get away. And so they hop into the boat and they sail across the Sea of Galilee. But then the unexpected happens. The crowd follows them. And when they land on the other side, the crowd starts arriving. And we're told that Jesus has compassion on them because they're like sheep without a shepherd. And so he teaches them and he ministers to them. And then when the end of the day comes and he realizes that there's nowhere close that they can get food, he feeds the 5,000 and he feeds the crowd. And the disciples are kept busy all day with crowd control, listening to Jesus, and then dishing out the food. Jesus then dismisses the crowd, puts the disciples in the boat, heads up onto the hillside where he prays all night. The disciples have a tough night on the boat. they rowing against the wind and it's becoming an effort and a strain. Jesus has watched them from the mountainside where he's been praying and he walks across the water to them. They see him, but they're terrified. And eventually he says, it's, it, it is I, don't be afraid. And he calls Peter to walk out on the water with him. And we know what happens. Peter walks for a bit and then he sinks. Jesus is there to grab him by the hand. They get back into the boat and the wind calms down and the boat reaches the other side. And the bottom line of all of this is that one might argue that their attempt to get away failed. Their retreat was crashed. And we, we might have described the scenario differently that when Jesus got to the other side and they saw the crowd there, maybe he could have, maybe he should have said to the disciples, climb back in, let's sail somewhere else, let's get away from the maddening crowd. But Jesus seems to adjust, to, to change gear, to change strategy. And although the planned silence and, and the planned downtime doesn't work out the way that it should have. Jesus spends time with the disciples in the boat. And then the disciples have time watching Jesus, bearing in mind that they've been doing the ministry. Now Jesus is doing the ministry. And then they watch him feed the crowds. They watch him dismiss the crowds and the crowds go. And then Jesus is up on the hillside, but he's still watching them. And then he walks out to be with them on the sea. And then he's with them in the boat. And so maybe their rest and their retreat didn't work out quite the way that they'd thought it would. Maybe things didn't work out exactly as they had planned. But they had spent time with Jesus. And I want to suggest that sometimes, even when we can't get away for an extended period of time, we can learn how to grab moments. We can learn how to make the most of the moment. And there are a couple of good things that we see in, in, in Mark chapter 6. And the first is that compassion and practical service is always good. That food is always good. But sometimes you have to make do with what you get. And that in the midst of this, there is prayer, there's a boat trip, and there are divine encounters, even if it's in the middle of the night. And maybe the secret to rest is not 
quantity, but quality. They had some bike time, which was exercise and movement. They had some service time. They had time to be quiet because people quieten down in the night and when you have to row hard against the wind, there's just the, the quietness of pushing. They had each other and they had Jesus. They had him in the boat. They had him in ministry. And even when they were separated from him, he was up on the hillside and Mark tells us that Jesus watched them in the boat. That even though they didn't sense his presence, his loving eye was always on them. His prayers were with them. And he knew what they, was going, what they were going through. And he finds them on the water. So let me conclude. We really do need rest in these challenging times. And we need those seven kinds of rest that I mentioned earlier. But I'm also learning that in these crazy, chaotic times, we could plan for two weeks leave and then suddenly it's level four restrictions and we can't go. Or we plan to do something and then the phone rings and a loved one is in hospital. And so things don't always turn out like we planned. We don't always get the space that we'd hoped for. But in the midst of it, we can still grab moments to rest. We can still remember that Jesus is with us. Now let me make a big disclaimer here. And my big disclaimer is that we should never use what I've said today as an excuse not to rest. We need to take leave. We need to plan. We need to try and set aside time for us to rest. But let's recognize that if things don't work out, there are other ways in which we can rest. And quantity isn't the be all and end all. That sometimes in an afternoon taken off or an evening taken off or in time spent with good Christian friends, our tanks can be refilled. Our faith can be renewed. In an evening encounter in prayer with Jesus, our strength can be renewed. And even in the dark night of the soul, where we learn to grab hold of the hand of Jesus, we can find rest. But it all comes back to knowing him. Knowing the one whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light. And as we come to the communion table this morning, it's my prayer that more than anything else, we will realize that rest comes by the Holy Spirit and in our relationship with Jesus. Yes, time spent with fellow believers is good. And yes, time spent in retreat is good. But first and foremost, our security and our hope comes from knowing Jesus. And I pray that we will draw near to him and find rest. Amen.
while we must be together and cannot take up an offering like we normally do, it is important for us to give ourselves to God, because every good gift we have comes from Him. So please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we dedicate all we are and all we have to you this day. Help us to show and share your love with others. We praise you for Jesus Christ and we open ourselves to him, that we might know him personally and follow him in all of our lives. Amen. One of the incredible things about God's love for us is that he never leaves us to do things by ourselves. That he is always there to help us, to sustain us, to strengthen us. And as we come to the table, this is just another beautiful example of that. Because Jesus reminded the disciples to do this in memory of him. And we believe that as we come to the table, as we remind ourselves of Jesus' death for us, as we think about his body broken for us and his blood shed for us, he meets us at this meal, strengthens us and renews us. And so we remind ourselves with the words of the Apostle Paul, who wrote, For I received from the Lord the tradition that I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. So let's draw near to him now and follow his example in word and in action. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to worship you this morning. We worship you because you are the God who has loved us. You are the God who sent your Son. And Lord Jesus, you came to die, to rise. And in your resurrection, you reminded us of what a personal God you are that you send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we would never be alone. And that you invite us to live in a relationship with you, to live as your friends and ultimately the ones who love you. We thank you and praise you for your amazing love. With angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, not as we ought, but as we are able, do we give you thanks for your body broken for us and your blood shed for us. And we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to sanctify us in these gifts of bread and wine that the bread that we break will be to us the communion of the body of Christ and the cup that we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ, that as we eat and drink, we may be partakers of your body and blood to our spiritual benefit and our growth in grace. And now we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so, according to the example and command of our Lord Jesus, and in remembrance of him, we do this who on the night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper he took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you are the Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, as you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. I invite you now that as I partake, that you also would do the same. And uh, we'll provide some pauses that, that you can um, just have communion in your own homes together. 
the body of Christ was broken for me and for you. And as he is with me in my home, he is with you in yours. Take and eat in remembrance of him. Jesus' blood was shed for our sins. Take and drink in remembrance of him. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. Father, we, we want to give you thanks and praise for all your goodness to us. We thank you that it doesn't matter what our circumstances are, what level lockdown we are in. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. There is always so much to be thankful for. There's always so much to be grateful for. You are so good to us and you bless us in so many different ways. And, and this morning we just want to stop and say thank you. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine and the blue skies that we experience in winter. Thank you for warm beds and homes. Thank you for technology that connects us. Thank you that you invite us to come to you. That you offer us opportunities for rest. For, for restoring our souls. But Lord Jesus, we want to take a minute to, to bring to you the needs of our world. There is so much going on that, that hurts our hearts. There's so much going on that, that we find exhausting. And Lord, we just, we just bring our hearts to you and we ask that you will carry them through this time. We pray especially for those who are ill and we just pray for your healing. We pray for those who are caring for those who are ill, whether in hospitals or even within families, that you will give them the energy and the wisdom that they need. Father, we pray for all of those for whom have lost their jobs during this COVID times. We pray that you will provide for them, that you'll build our economy to a point where jobs will be created once again. And Father, we pray that this coronavirus will come to an end. But until then, that you'll give us the strength and the stamina to continue to be faithful, to serve you, to find joy. And so, Lord, carry us, use us, bless us and our families. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
The photo that you're looking at is of Christy Reinecke, who is the daughter of Trina and Harry Snedden. She's ringing the bell at the cancer ward where she's just undergone her last chemotherapy and uh, she will then begin her radiation therapy. Christy has been on our prayer group. Her cancer is serious and we are so grateful to God that he's brought her thus far. But I have a permission to share this photo with you as a way of encouraging you that our prayers are answered, but also to ask that you keep praying for Christy and, and a number of other folk in the congregation who are in an ongoing fight with cancer. Please do keep them in your prayers and in your love. And Lord, we thank you for answered prayers. It's been a joy worshipping with you this morning. I pray that you have been blessed by our time together. For us at Strubens Valley, we will be moving to face-to-face -face services from next week, which we'll be recording and uploading. And so just a huge thank you to Theo and to Emmanuel for, for allowing us to share in their services over these last few weeks as I have been sick and my little boy has been sick. We're just so grateful for your generosity in that way. But go into your week, find moments and opportunities of rest. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and with those that we love, now and forever. Amen. At Strubens Valley United, we have only one birthday this week, and that's on Friday. On Friday, it is Len's birthday. We wish you a very, very happy birthday, Len, and we pray that God blesses you in the year ahead. And here are the birthdays for Emmanuel and Grace. On Sunday the 1st, Lunter turns 6. On Monday the 2nd, Brenda has a birthday. And Conlon turn six. Also on Monday the 2nd, Sally and Charles have their birthdays. On Tuesday the 3rd, Carla turns 12. And on Wednesday the 4th, Louise has a birthday. On Friday the 6th, it is Corin's turn to have a birthday. And Evan turns three. On Saturday the 7th, Marie and Robert have their birthdays. Robert turns 14. There are no anniversaries at Emmanuel and Grace this week. Now let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these special days in our lives and for the people who help to make them awesome. 
Lord, we ask that you bless all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week and make them feel special. This we ask in your name. Amen.